Hello, welcome to my studio. If you're new, welcome, and if you're returning, welcome back. So today, normally I try to explain what I'm doing, but I can't even explain what I'm doing. So I'm gonna just get started and kind of talk it through. This may turn into a disaster. It may turn into something beautiful. I'm working in my Dilutions journal and I just have an idea. So I'm gonna start out with just some yellow and green acrylic paint because I don't want you just sitting listening to me talk because that gets old in a hurry. Okay, there's some yellow. Um, and this is just Crafts for All acrylic paint. It's old, that's all I can tell you. Now this one is Heidi Swap, and this is called something, I have no idea, oh, just called green, but it's really kind of a neon -y green, and I just love color, I miss color, I want some color. So I'm gonna add some of this kind of a fluorescent -y green in there, and we'll see where that gets us. And then I'm gonna add a little silver. And what I'm doing right now is laying in a bit of a background. And I just want a little shimmer and shine. And we'll just see how far this takes us because I did not gesso this because um, I know the paint's going to just want to kind of sink in, but that's totally okay. I don't, I don't care. So I've got a baby wipe and I'm just going to start working this color all around the journal and we will see what we get. I hope I can still see the little lines that I drew. If not, this could even be more interesting than I'm predicting. But what I'm going for, trying to go for, is spring. A spring color. So that's why I've got the yellow and I've got the green and then the silver just to give it a little punch. Now when I've done this with the metallic gold and uh, it too is from uh, Martha Stewart. I had it got a little more punch than I did from this one. I can still see my, my lines, so that's fine. They're just a guideline, so that's good. Okay, well, this needs to dry a little bit. And normally, uh, when I'm working in my journal, I would just stop right here and I would uh, let her dry. But for the sake of the video, I think I've learned how to edit out the drying time. So I'm gonna hit it with my heat gun and get this just a little bit dry. We'll see, we'll see how it goes. Okay, that's good and dry. Now that it's dry, I can catch a little bit of that silver shimmer, but I wouldn't call it overwhelming. Okay, so, what my thought is, and I've got some Posca markers here. So if you don't have Posca markers, you can just use your acrylic paint and a brush, whatever you want. But what I am thinking, what's on my mind is spring. And right now it is the first week in April here in Michigan and it is pouring rain. So, some of you have seen me do kind of a, a negative space and we make a, a real loud uh, background. So that's what I'm working on now is that background where we want it small. But instead of just random marks, I'm going to put some of that in. But I want to also put in some flowers because when this rain started today, and I think it started sometime in the night, we had rain yesterday. We've just had some rainy days, but... It made me think, okay, it's April. April showers bring May flowers. So um, I'm not sure you can see her, but I have a girl here and she's holding an umbrella. So I want the rain to be behind her and that she's the flowers. Does that make sense? Well, 
Does anything from my imagination make sense? It's to me, it does. That's the scary part, huh? <laughs> oh, Julie. Anyway, she's going to have a flowing dress with just these flowers following her around. And I'm starting out with orange, but I like brights. I'm, they said, I, and I've, I, I've always been a girl who likes color, but for some reason lately, I have really been craving color. Not sure why, but I'm embracing it. What do you think of that? So just putting some flowers here, there, and everywhere. I noticed in one or two videos back, Maybe one, I'm not sure. But you guys could see my face. Hi! <laughs> so, oh, Julie. So, I was just trying to be a little more friendly. I thought, there's my face in there, and I didn't even bother to say hi. What's up with that, huh? Indeed. That video hasn't shown at the time that I am doing this. But when you see this, that video will already be there. Okay, so that was the orange. So I want to think about some centers and in my little fantasy flowers. So I'm going to go with some purple. Orange and purple are like total opposites. And again, you know, bright, punchy. That's what I'm going for. It's just some... Fantasy flowers in a variety of colors. And I want to add some greenery to her. You know, some leaves and maybe some little vines. But just keep adding some flowers. Okay. And I'm setting aside the colors I've already used so that I keep a variety going. And I'm sorry for the boarding house reach. Okay, this is red. So maybe with the red, I'll just make some suggestions. You know, I use that word a lot, meaning I'm not, I really can't draw it. Um, just some roses, kind of, you know, like petally flowers like that. And I'm just, some of them will be facing us. Some of them will be facing the ground. Some of them will, you know, just every combination They may not even look like flowers, but it's design and it's interest, so it'll do something. I don't think I'm going to make too many of these, though. They take a little minute to make, don't they? Oh, well, where are we going? Huh? It's not a race. No pressure. How is your week going? What kind of weather are you having for if it's spring there or maybe you're watching this in the middle of winter? I have no idea. Leave me a comment and let me know what's happening in your neck of the woods. I hope you're well. I hope your family is well. If you're working... I hope things at the job site are well. I'm a nurse. So, although people refer to it as your day job when you're a YouTube creator, but I work at night and I take care of pediatrics. So, it's a great job. It really is. I love my job. But it's not the job. It's me. I'm just getting old. And let's face it, it happens. If it doesn't, well, you know, then what have we got? So yeah, I'm getting old and I'm just kind of trying to work towards my retirement. So I'm hoping that my YouTube channel will, you know, mature and that maybe these tutorials and 
journal play, mixed media will inspire you. Or maybe you know a friend who would enjoy something like this. And you can always share the video with them. It, it, it helps me a lot. And it doesn't cost. I hope that you feel like these are videos that you can, you know, share. I say that as I work these roses in here. Not really knowing what this end product's going to be here, but... It's all good, right? It's my art journal. Maybe it'll turn into just practice and a learning experience. I never, honestly, I, I'm not just saying this. I don't consider that a waste of time. I have to learn, you know, and I don't know every technique that there is. I don't know, you know, what, uh, what all of the new products can do. So I learn. I watch videos. Who are some of the other creators that you enjoy a lot? Uh, Marami Small Art. Watch her for years. She's kind of changed her format a bit with multiple cameras and beautiful music. So I encourage you to take a look at, at her beautiful art. Um, I like to watch Mike Deacon and... Uh, he has more of a technical style, but I like it very much. And um, he works with a company called Indigo Blue. Um, I don't really see their products here in the U.S. He's in the in the U.K. somewhere. So, um, and you know, a city by the name of Leeds comes to mind, and maybe that's where he used to live. Since I've watched him, he moved households, so I'm not really sure, but. Uh, I know that he used to go to um, Art of the Heart, which is uh, Diane Reevely's store, but he hasn't been there for a little while. I don't know if he just moved too far away. I just don't know. Okay, I'm liking that so far. We've got the red roses and we've got some little yellow fantasy flowers. I guess the roses are really kind of fantasy too. Okay, got a green here. And let's just add some, oh, I'm putting my hand in some of the wetness. Only problem with that is I just don't want to stamp colors all willy-nilly. But you know what? If I do, I do. Not going to worry about it. Just add some little leaves here with the roses. Well, it seems like, I just looked outside, it seems like the rain has stopped. My window is right that way, and I oversee, they call it a lake, I would call it a pond, but it's good size, and we get geese, and we get ducks, and so it's nice, it's, it's calming, and then when the weather gets a little better, maybe more towards May, like I said, right now it's April when I'm doing this video. Um, there's a fountain in it. And the sound from that, it really is, it, it's pretty. It's, it's very relaxing. And I'm just glad I've got a, a window seat to that. It's pretty. Do you like water features? I had a, in my home pr prior to this one, I had a, just a little fountain. There was uh, kind of a kick around here. And this we're talking maybe, oh, at least five years ago. To have like a water garden and to have some water lilies and some type of a water feature. Just real popular. And I went with the with the whole thing. And it was it was really nice. But unless I was sitting outside, I really couldn't. I couldn't really hear it from the inside of my house. Just the layout and all didn't lend itself to enjoying the backyard from in the house. Now your outdoor space is becoming more of a of a thing so that you can have things in your backyard and see them from the house. But anyway, I guess I'm just saying all that to say that I, I enjoy having a, a little water feature. It is a calming sound, pleasant, 
And when you mix it with the birds and the squirrels and the geese. Now the ducks can be hilarious because they can get a quack going that just sounds like someone told them the funniest joke of the year. And it's, uh, it's fun. It's fun. So how is this looking to you? I can tell you looking through the lens, I can just see things so differently. And also when I um, stand up and just get further away, but I don't have those advantages while I'm doing a video. So I'm just kind of going on instinct here, but it's all good. I'm liking this so far. So what are you doing in your journals? Do you have an altered book type journal or do you have a dilutions journal like this? I know they're quite popular. I, uh, I know I, I like mine well enough that, you know, this one is almost done and I already have another one waiting in the wings. We'll have fun when I get that started, huh? We'll, we'll uh, do just a, a whole slew of backgrounds to kind of break it in. What do you think about that? Let me know in the comments if that's something you'd like to see just to kind of, you know, break up the, the white pages so that it's not so intimidating. Because, you know, they, they can be. You know, they're big, they're all white, and you're just like, oh, can I do it? Okay, have I got in this bunch a pink yes I like pink and then I'm going to grab this peachy color too and put it more on top so I can see it all right so her dress is getting pretty full which is fine um I may even take these colors even further than where, what I drew her dress um I probably I probably will and um I really should have been putting these things in her hair as well. So maybe I'm going to back up a little bit so I don't get myself too far, too far ahead and get some flowers in her hair or where her hair is going to be drawn. I'm kind of tipping my head left and right. Maybe you can see my face. Hi. Not sure. Now that I I've got an umbrella that she's going to be holding. And I wasn't sure if I should put the flowers on the umbrella or maybe kind of a different type of flower. You know, make the pattern of her and her dress one way and then make the pattern of her umbrella another way. I could do something like that. No right, no wrong, huh? I don't need to be contemplating this so much. Just, just get her done, Julie. I wish I could hear your voices, but it feels like you're here with me. It does. And I hope you're doing well. And I'm so grateful that you're joining me. And I hope you're crafting along if you're able. Maybe you're just getting ready to go to bed. If so, I hope you have a good night's sleep. Sometimes when I concentrate, I get a little quiet, and I'm sorry. I'm not very good company when I do that, am I? Putting the purple centers. I think we got her caught up. She kind of reminds me now of some of the art that you see in Mexico. All bright and beautiful florals, and not that I'm anywhere close to the beauty of that, but... The women there dress 
Oh, so beautiful. I always loved it. I lived in Arizona for 20 years. And when I was in Tucson, we were just very close to the, to the border. And um, the influence of the architecture and um, your interior design was very influenced. And I, I just loved it. Lots of bright color, lots of florals, lots of nature. Birds were a common thing. We had these little, I thought they were salamanders, but they're called geckos, little lizards that hang out at your porch light and grab the moths and just all that kind of thing. It's so pretty. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm liking her a lot. I need to extend now the design a little bit further because we're going to cut into it with, with paint. I didn't even get her sleeve. So I need to definitely keep expanding this little design. And uh, keep working her. Okay. So where you're living now, is that where you've lived your whole life? I've lived in a lot of different states and cities. My uh, husband was in the hotel business, and so we moved around, but um, I enjoyed it. I learned so much about different cultures and different traditions and, you know, even just the, the recipes and, and the cuisine was so different, but... I just always felt like that made me uh, just a more rounded person and, you know, richer. My life was richer because of it. I haven't been living too long where I'm at right now, less than a year. Um, but I didn't change states this time. But I just moved to be closer to my grandson and my work that... Uh, that I do my pediatric work is here just as well. So I just pretty much had to just change addresses and uh, with my company and just let them know my new street address and my phone number didn't change. You know, we don't, we don't change our phone numbers anymore just because we move. So, so there, okay. I'm going to add, I've just got a few spaces here that I think, an orange flower would fit nice and I want to I do want this busy I do want this filled in it it does make a difference add those guys and get their purple centers in it it starts to become one of those um, hunt and seek kind of things you know can you find the shovel? Can you find the bucket? Can you find, remember those, uh, especially in the doctor's office when we were kids, we would sit there and do that. Probably most of you are too young to remember that, but I think the book was called Highlights and you would uh, do these kind of seeking games. Okay, so her umbrella. I think I'm going to start with some pink flowers. The, this won't peg, so I'm just setting this aside. Uh, let me get it started. Yes, it's started. Okay, so what kind of flowers here? Maybe just lines like that. Yeah, I'm liking this okay. Kind of seeing where my little guidelines are. These Posca pens are, they're acrylic 
and I'm working acrylic on top of acrylic. So just as long as you keep the nibs clean, if, if your underpainting wasn't quite as dry as maybe you thought it was and you get some of the background acrylic on top of the Posca pen, you can just, you know, rub it off on a paper towel or something like that. But you do want to be always careful because acrylics, they can be dry on top, but they're not really dry through and through. And the trouble with that is when you start using like alcohol markers or your different expensive black pens, well, what will happen is you'll be able to work your project, but the next time you go to use them, the acrylics have plugged up the nibs and you, then you're like, well, what's wrong with this pen? What happened? And well, that's what happened is you just, you really need to be cautious when you're using anything on top of acrylic that hasn't had a, a decent opportunity to cure. All right, so I'm gonna add some leaves to these pink flowers. And I will give them some centers. Now I'm not working from a reference. I'm not, I'm just kind of decided I wanted to do something to help me have the right attitude about all this rain because it is April and we, I know that the ground needs the moisture, the hydration, so that it can start its spring work. And although we've got some growth, you can see, not a lot, not a lot, especially the, 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 the trees budding out, it seems like, but you know, my memory, who knows, maybe I'm, you know, having positive thoughts, but not realistic thoughts, but it just seemed like by April, you could see a little more of the trees budding out. Uh, maybe the forsythias starting to bud out. We do see the bulbs. You can see that the bulbs are starting to show their little faces. Um, no blooms yet, but you know, the, the greenery is coming up. And some of the other um, perennials are coming up. So this is kind of a peachy color that I'm putting in the centers. And if they don't seem bright enough or contrasty enough, I'll just hit them with another color as well. We'll just have to see. But so far, I think they're showing up okay. Wouldn't say they're the brightest. No, I wouldn't. Have I gotten them all? Mm, pretty good. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Now I want something else in that umbrella. What color haven't I used yet? Um, see, I've got, I've got yellow, but I think that's so much of the background. Um, I've got this blue, a light blue. Let's give that one a try. Let's see. And what I was gonna do it, oh, I can see where I missed a center, and I want to get it before I lose track of it. Oh, I see two of them. Maybe you're shouting out at me, and I'm just, just takes a little bit to travel and get to me. Okay, so I'm just going to put dots all over, kind of in a zen tangly kind of a mood, you know what I mean? Just some tiny details. I tell you, in any of this journal work, in my opinion, the tiniest details are just what make it so special and so sweet. I, I really do believe that. Just, just so nice. I know that when I'm looking at artwork and, uh, I'm deciding, okay, why do I like this so much? Or 
why is this not my favorite? What's going on? Oftentimes, I wouldn't say 100%, but oftentimes, oh, I missed another center. Oftentimes, it lacks the detail. So maybe that's just a Julie thing. Maybe that's just something that catches my, my eye. I don't know. Okay, it's getting a little dry, so I miss. And don't bang your markers, your acrylic markers. If there's no paint flowing, then just hold it down against like a paper towel or a scratch sheet of paper until you can see the ink flowing. And then if it just is running out as you're using it, just give it a gentle one-time push. But, you know, I, I just, I hear and I've seen people just bang these markers and, you know, you're just ruining the nibs. It's kind of reminiscent to when you're in an elevator and someone keeps hitting and hitting and hitting and hitting. It, it only engages once. And after that, all you're doing is wearing out the button. But anyway... I think sometimes people just are full of a little nervous energy. Okay, so there's our umbrella, and there's our girl, and her hair is going to be involved in here. And then this is our rainy weather. So I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, in more of a spread apart way, just add a few more of the flowers that would be the bottom of her dress, but not, not too tight together. Just kind of like here, there, here, there kind of a thing. Okay, I'm gonna add some more of those roses. <laughs> well, that's what I'm calling them. <laughs> I can see there could just be just a little bit of red here and there. Just little dots, like, you know, like it's trying to show through. I'm just making some lines to make these petally flowers. I have a rose bee little bit lower than the rest just like I have the orange ones a little bit lower than the rest right right okay maybe one right here I'm not even sure if you can see that corner but I hope so now the green leaves I can see some places now the green when it dries it's a little bit darker but I still like it. I think it's fine. But in a way, because I've got this yellowy, greeny, trying to create kind of a sunshiny color, it's uh, showing up even though it's, you know, green on green. So I, I like that. We getting there? think so. A few leaves that are kind of coming out at the bottom. Okay, now the purple centers. Did I get them all? I think so. Mm. Find out soon enough. Okay, so now we're going to start with filling in the dark. Is that what I like to do next? Or is it? No, I think it's going to be filling in her face. I wonder if I could just do it with Posca because I really am not planning on a lot of detail to her face. We're going to give it a go. I'm going to give her a hand. She's going to have that hand coming out here. That's her sleeve. 
and then just an indication of a face. little nose you know what I'm just gonna go where I it's her umbrella and I'm just kind of struggling with that umbrella handle and so I'm just gonna put it in later instead of being so unsure okay now she's walking in the rain so how am I gonna indicate rain Hmm. Well, and I'm going to, I, I wasn't sure of what dark color that I wanted to kind of block this in with. Um, I was afraid that navy blue, but I'm kind of thinking it might be good. So, all right. Well, I knew I was going to have to get some supplies because I, like I said, I'm just kind of flying with this. I wasn't sure. So I'm going to grab some blue paint. So you can talk amongst yourself as I go in and grab this paint. Okay. And I've got some silver. And I think what I'm going to grab is, um, I've got it right here. Ha ha. Okay. The rest I got right here. And that is a piece of wax paper that I'm going to use as a bit of a mixing tray. Little noisy, I apologize for that. And I want to get my chair scooted in because if I don't, what happens is I end up pulling my journal towards me and then you can't see. Okay, so I want to start with a little bit of blue. This blue, and this is a real matte and um, it, it has very good coverage. But I want to add some silver in it while it's still wet. And I'm just trying to think of, like, should I mix it? Okay, I think what I'll do is I'll just have some silver here and I'll do the blue like I always do. Okay. See, this blue dries super fast and um, super fast and super matte. So I just don't want to lose the, the mixing ability. And I don't know if you can see this, but I'm just putting some silver like this on this little piece of wax paper and so that's going to be on my side and I've got acrylic brushes in case I wish I had an acrylic brush I've got some water containers so okay I am going to need an acrylic brush aren't I how am I going to do this uh, I want pardon my arm this is a good one to go with this one will get me and then I've got some other ones here to when I'm doing a little bit more of the close-up work okay here we go add some of this blue and I really like to kind of work close well, that was a big blob flying wasn't it close to my picture so that I don't like you know, overshoot. And then get her umbrella. And the umbrella is going to have some details that I'm just planning to put in later. You know, like the handle and that little thing that's on top of an umbrella, that little pointy guy. Now, all those kinds of details I plan to add a little bit later. Okay. And I'm not so worried if I don't have raindrops just yet. 
going around her face. And I can always kind of tighten it up again with the Posca. Now her dress again. She's got these dramatic sleeves. Her hand. And then these sleeves again. And I'm just, I don't want this to be, you know, too stiff. I just want it to be kind of rumply like that. Okay. Now here's more where I'm going to be, want, I'm going to drop this in the water where I want to be able to add just a little bit of silver here and there. So I'm just going to put some and kind of mix it in because this is supposed to be a rainy day. So we'll see what this does. Maybe nothing. I'm going to wet this big old mop brush because otherwise all the paint will just sink into it. But I'm not trying to thin down my paint at all. Like I said, we may not even see the silver. I don't know. We'll see. I think a little bit we are. Okay, get some more paint. You know, um, the rain stopped. And it's still very overcast, but it just kind of looks like maybe the sun's trying to come out a little bit. What do you think of that? Wouldn't that be nice? But again, I like my little city that I'm in. And we are near the lake, Lake Michigan. And so with that being close there, we do get more lake effect snow. And we also get more cloudiness, more overcastiness. So even when the precipitation isn't falling, it they say we get more. I, like I said, I haven't lived here that long. That hasn't been my experience so far. We've had a nice number of sunny days. And I came from the Detroit area where it seemed like we had an awful lot of gloom. Um, but... Here, I mean, definitely there's been some, some sunny days. This winter, we would have like, you know, heavy overcast and then, you know, inches and inches of snow, even uh, over a foot, which was just beautiful. It really is pretty to see, um, you know, a little bit, a little bit nerve wracking to drive in, but I'm sure I'll get used to it a little better than I'm used to it right now and they do have excellent snow removal equipment and all so that's good I realize I'm getting some of this blue paint on my work table but um, it's smooth enough that even if it dries it kind of peels off so it's okay all right so when it's wet it's a little bit hard for me to see what's going on. But as it dries, then I can see. I'm going to add just some more silver here, there, here, there. I mean, I wasn't expecting it to look like, you know, raindrops or anything. But it's just to kind of give it a little different atmosphere. Having a little silver in the... In the dark, yeah. A little more here. This is wetter still. So it's blending more, which is great. And you know, brush strokes, fine. I'm, I'm okay with that. This gives it that artsy look, which I like. I love. Right? That's what gives it charm. Okay, I think, I think we're doing good. Okay, put that in the, because acrylic paint, if you're not on it, 
you are going to end up with cement. I'm going to just, you know, there's no way to put that silver back and I'll, I'll keep it out, but, and I might even fold this over on top of it to kind of preserve it. But let's hope number one, I don't step in it, but uh, I'm going to try to be able to put it um, maybe, you know, on a, a different blank page because I, I don't want to just throw it away if I can avoid it. Okay, so the blue is drying quite quickly, but I think I'm going to hasten it up just a little bit. Now, again, I would have normally just walk away, but I don't want to do that. I want to keep working on her. So I'm going to grab the heat gun and hopefully my editing skills, I can edit this out. Hope so. All right. Wish me luck. See you on the other side. Okay. Looking good. All right. So now I'm going to just give her just a little bit of outline, but I, I kind of want to keep within these colors, but just to kind of help her stand out just a little bit. So I'm, I think what I'm going to do is start with her hair. So here I am with green. Why am I doing that? All right. Let's get maybe, um, some brown and some yellow. I realize that the background is quite yellow, but I think this will, will work okay. We'll, I'll start out with some yellow and it's still a little damp, but that's okay. I'm just gonna give her some flowy hair. And of course, some of it's going under her umbrella and some of it's gonna flow on the other side of her shoulder. Yeah, okay. And now I'm gonna let that dry just a little bit and I can start maybe working on the outline of her umbrella. Um, let's start with yellow and then just see what it looks like. You know, if it shows or if it doesn't show, I just, we'll just have to, we'll just have to see. Sometimes if you just tighten up a line, it is enough to bring the foreground forward and push the background back. Not always, but often. Okay, now, here's her umbrella, and it's kind of mixing up with her hair, so I'm not, I'm not too worried if I don't have the exact markings, because it could be hair in front, and you know, who knows? We don't know. Okay, that, I think that definitely helps. I'm going to hit the hair now with some brown. want some strands to be out into the blue background. Okay. How we doing? I think this is good. I'm not even really going to give her facial features. She's just, she's just a, like, like the flower fairy waiting for her time in May. Maybe I'll give her a little bit of pinky cheeks. Nothing too dramatic. And so far, I'm going to just leave her like that. Okay, now, I think our dress is, is pretty nicely... Um, 
demarcated. I just kind of needed to demarcate her umbrella from her hair and all that. But so far, I'm liking it. I think her hair needs a little more. Don't you? It's kind of dull for a flower lady. Let's give her some purple. See what that does. Oh, I like it already. Definitely. She was just looking a little too drab. Yeah. Okay. Yep. I'm liking it. Yep. Definitely liking it. Okay. So, now... This is kind of scary for me, but I'm just going to have to go for it. I'm going to have to decide where that, you know, that stem that comes up from your umbrella, where is that located? And, you know, because that's going to be like the continuation to her handle and all of that. I'm going to start with this gray color. It may not show up enough, but I can always go darker, but it's pretty hard to go lighter. So I'm thinking I'm going to be putting it. Mm. See, I had it in the drawing right here. Maybe I should just stick with that. Like that. And then that goes into the umbrella. So then I've got this shorter kind of a ruler that I can take it from that spot and then bring it to her hand. But, you know, it's got to be st straight. It's got to make sense because your eye will kind of fill that in. It really, really will. So would it go across her face? Or would it be, well, let's try putting it behind her face and see what we think. And then maybe we'll have to go now. It's gonna, the Pasca's gonna be further out than my little measuring thing here. And then I can go here. All right, let's see. You know, I think that's gonna be fine because again, we're just creating suggestions, not really, um, you know, obviously not photorealistic kind of thing. And I'm just going to thicken this up a little bit. And there's her, her hand. And then what I was thinking was to maybe have some kind of a, like a jewel or a, a, a something decoration on the handle. Like maybe I'll just make a round circle. And then when that dries, I'll lay a little bit of the gray on top of that. So here is our lady with her, with her spring flowers, but she's in the April rain. I'm liking her. I hope that you do. I think that she's interesting and fun. I do. And I, I, I like the, the suggestiveness of it and not, you know, that it's not all the details. Just leave some to your imagination. Okay. Well, I like it well enough to sign. What do you think of that? Let's get a signature. Always, always sign your work. And there's a little April shower in my journal. Thanks so much for joining me. If you found this helpful or inspirational, please consider hitting the likes, um, thumbs up. And I hope that you will consider subscribing and hit the bell for notifications. I will see you in my next video. Thanks.